My name is Shadi Ashtai. I'm the manager of Sound and Vision. I'm doing a talk on Wolfram Video. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. We're having um, kind of longer sessions of bundled talks. Um, today, it's me talking about video after me, Carlo, talking about audio, and then Marcus showing us fun examples with our image processing capabilities. Um, the title of the talk is What's New in Wolfram Video, but I'm gonna kind of start from a more or less scratch, not spending so much time on things we have talked about in the previous years, but it should basically give you the current state of um, how video works in the Wolfram language, um, how we can interact with it, how we can generate some videos from material that we can produce in the system, and more importantly, how we can process and analyze videos, either the ones we have created or the ones that we have um, imported from files that we have generated. There's plenty of them that is coming through our video sensors, imaging sensors. Um, video has been a first class citizen in Mathematica, like numbers, like um, images, which was introduced over a decade ago. Um, we can link to a video file. Uh, what what we get back in a Wolfram um, notebook is a built-in player, which was something we turned on in the past year. Um, so we can interact with it. There is uh, obviously the play pause button. There is a slider that takes us through, uh, gives us the time, um, volume button that's useful, and a couple of other things under the hamburger menu. Um, useful stuff. Um, Cloud object is another very easy, convenient way of um, storing our video assets and then linking to them. Um, perfectly the same thing. Um, most of the times we have files locally on, on our computers, no need to go to remote servers anyway, so we can just link to them, just a video wrapper around it, and there it is, same object. Basic information about video objects, how long the video is, um, what's the size, what encoder has been used to create this um, video, uh, audio channels and so forth. Basic information, we can access those individually as, as well. This thing jumped on me. Um, functions like image dimensions and other image properties or audio properties all work on that same video object. Um, so we think our, our graphics and visualizations have been strong forever in Mathematica since version one. Uh, Manipulate, which was added in version six, and we have uh, thousands of them in demonstrations, have been a great source of people creating GIFs and animation in um, Wolfram language. When you have a list animate animate in Mathematica notebook, it gets a little, um, the notebook size gets big, playback sometimes becomes slow, natural thing to creating very, very long, high resolution animations is really to create um, videos. So just like we have had manipulates before, we can just wrap uh, the manipulate inside of a video. Some of these take a couple of seconds, some of them take, take longer, I've pre-computed all of that. So just wrap your manipulate into, an, into a video wrapper, you get a video back, it's just as if the slider was, you were sliding it, but we'll just automatically do it. Um, again, starting from a manipulate that has a single var variable, that's the easiest thing we can convert to a video and, and that manipulate could be um, interactively changed. Uh, exactly the same expression, I just replaced the head manipulate with animation video. The rest of the expression is exactly the same. I again, don't evaluate this, but I've done that before. I get a video object of that thing without all the decorations around it, which was the controls of the manipulate and get that um, into an MP4 file. Um, what's that? It's, it's that the uh, animation video has a default duration of I think five seconds by default. Uh, you can specify whatever duration you want, but then the speed of that one slider is just linearly going from zero to end of the slider. Yeah, but, but you could change that of course. Um, Webcam and screen capture was something that was added recently in the past version. Whatever imaging devices you have, typically anything USB connected gets detected. Here I have only my built-in webcam. Um, and so I can do something like video capture, gives me a little GUI, I can open it up, gives me a little thumbnail in there. 
uh, we can start recording for as many seconds as we want. Um, if I if I look at um, the cells, you'll see that's running. If I do something like one plus one, it has to wait until I do stop. So it gives me the video object back. If I scroll down, then the two is computed. Um, the one thing that is really wanted with video capture, like we had with audio capture, is that while you're capturing whatever you're capturing, you can do other computations. So this other syntax of video capture, which you can pass it a dynamic variable, basically no evaluation is happening. Sync, I can start recording to prove that. And then, um, so while that's going, I can do any computation like that one plus one, stop the capture. Um, and then what happens in the video um, variable that I had passed to my video capture function, I get the video object back. Exactly the same scenario we have with screen capturing. Um, so if I open that, we have a function video screen capture. Um, same thing, I can take a look at the preview that is being captured. That's my screen, that's my notebook. I can start recording, I can stop the recording. Um, so that's that. Um, another source of, another good source of uh, videos are images in different worms, uh, forms and shapes, not worms. Um, and um, a lot of times there are larger images that we just want to tour around. Sometimes there are images that we want to change and morph and things like that. Um, when we are touring around a, an image, this function tour video is a function that can generate interesting um, tours around, around the object. Um, this one is a larger image, not extremely large, but large, hard to see all the details. Um, this little touring around the video that goes from one position to another and zooms for the width um, basically gives me a video object that is panning and zooming both at the same time on that larger image. We can do slightly, uh, we can do any elaborate touring around any video. This was an example from Steven's blog post uh, where we are defining now not just one single linear path and then zooming, we can just do spirals around an image. We can do any other shape, sinusoidal rotating and, and doing other fun things. Um, anything in the system is just very easy to define. And then this one, for instance, just view goes around the wolves and then lands on, on a wolf's eye. That was what we landed on for Steven's blog post when this was going out. Um, and then, um, and then Wolfram language comes with a whole suite of um, capabilities, such as all the image processing that we have, for instance, for finding faces. Um, so let me do a little housekeeping here, close something so that I know where I'm going. Um, okay, so I compute all the faces of physicians um, in the physics conference, and then I wanna see all of them one at a time. So run the tour, and, and uh, nice that I didn't have this one pre-computed. For most of our video computations, we have that progress indicator that says where we are at the computation that needs to happen. So this one finds the shortest path of all the detected faces in that image and goes from one to another, visiting everyone. Um, and, and that's it. And you can imagine this is just, again, the one example, one function find faces has been used to put together this tour, but we could do things like object detection. It could things like um, uh, abnormal cells that I've detected in the image and just visit them one at a time and create the nice video. Um, that is basically a summary of what we are looking at. Um, quick thing, none of these videos that I showed so far, I added an audio to it, but we have this function video combine. Um, and for instance, in this particular case, um, I, I had a short B uh, audio. I padded it to the duration of the faces images. And then I added that to the video that I had created before. And so let's just bug the physicist a little with the B going around. Um, so, okay, I was, um, the, the point of that is that, uh, again, audio files, we have abundance of them. We can just combine them with our videos. We also have a whole bunch of audio generators, um, other talks in the conference, previous talks in the previous conferences, and then we can bundle them up together. Um, I'll go through this slide, uh, or at least the first part, parts a little faster. 
Um, once you have a video, I, I would say if you have generated it, you have the boundaries of that video fine. If you have imported it, you may wanna do editing on that. So here I have a happy bird um, on a tree. Um, it's about 15 seconds long, um, additional tracks and so forth. Let's do it some little cleanup, editing, whatever. For instance, I just wanna focus on that one second, I'll do trimming. If I wanted to resize the frames, we have uh, functions to do that. So any, any simple editing, um, we're really not a video editor. We're not gonna pretend we're comparing, com competing with any of the video editors, but these kind of things that you wanna focus on a time interval of a video, rotate, uh, resize, those things just come handy. We don't want to go to other systems to do our video editing. Um, one bit at a time, whatever we think is missing and useful, we are adding them. I keep saying, uh, give us feedback because this is such an evolving part of the language at this point. Um, other examples like cropping, like rotating, rotating 20 degrees. Um, I don't think I have any of those. So this was just a square crop on the, on the bird. This one is gonna be 20 degree rotation. We could, um, I guess I've done this one. Um, is just a negation if that's taking long. I'm not gonna wait for that. That's, that's just an obvious 20 degrees rotation on every frame. Oh, where did I go? Um, and then other things like any, any effects that we would like to apply to our images. And this one is just for fun, but um, imagine something like edge detection of frames would be useful. All of those are immediately accessible. Um, one thing in this version that is coming 13.2 um, is time varying editing. So most of the things I showed so far, we have one operation, we apply it to every frame, same operation. Uh, what if we wanted to change the operation over time? So here's the duration of that same video that I had. Um, let me just show you, explain and then show the result. Um, now, what if we wanted to, instead of rotating every frame 20 degrees, I'm just rotating um, starting from zero degrees all the way um, 360 degrees and back as um, that two pi slot duration is just doing a perfect 360 degrees for us. Next example, we have some effect like nested compositions. I'm adding the number of compositions and then I'm, I'm um, scaling differently and then rotating. Uh, so again, over time, we start from the original image um, I think a second in, we start adding nested additions. I'm rotating or increasing the amount of rotation for every of those nestings and so forth. Um, again, super easy, super fun. Um, I really can spend hours on, uh, on effects and, and also other fun generations. Um, another interesting one that I encountered in the past few days, I was uh, playing with our functions, an image transformation that is just um, pushing things to the side and adding copies with, again, a single line of image transform and fractional part. Um, talking about audio editing and processing, a lot of the times we have audio tracks that um, end up being noisy or end up having, in this particular case, I really wasn't sure, do I want a high pass filter or low pass filter? Because there is some sound of wind coming, but the bird is more of a high pitch. So I, I decided I'll keep the bird, get rid of the wind. Um, I don't know how much of that can be heard, but the wind is gone, the bird stays. And if, if you look at the spectrogram again, very well connection of our video capabilities with audio because most um, videos come with audio tracks and we can see all the lower frequency content of that audio track is removed. Um, other part of um, editing that we have is when we have multiple videos that we somehow want to combine or we have uh, videos and images or video and text, video and graphics that we would like to combine. For instance, here I have something that we generated um, last year, I believe, uh, with Mathematica and our video capability functions. We had a rule 30 audio with that audio that got played with this video. And then once we had um, video computation, we said, why not just show the evolution of rule 30 in a video? Um, and then in this, in this other example, I'm doing an overlay video video with Mathematica Spikey to show our logo on the side of that video. 
Um, next example, again, using the time varying stuff, I'm doing overlay, um, overlay video, same function, but rotating that logo on the side just to add some little fun to it. And so the logo is down there as I play, the logo is rotating as well. So again, the whole world of whatever we want to do. Um, this other one, I'm just uh, putting a random text. It could be an explanation of what you have done as that text, or um, um, it could be anything else that we compute. But then a um, couple more seconds, we'll wait for this one. Um, that shows, um, for instance, my uh, word hello, uh, which is just a text going from one corner to another. So I think a whole lot of, again, video generation, but decorations like text, like other graphics overlays would just um, make our videos that we have generated more um, understandable, intuitive, and useful. So we're trying to just incorporate all of that into our functionality so that everything is there available and no need to go anywhere else. I wanted to um, highlight, these are not new, but I wanted to highlight our four generic functions around video um, that practically can do anything. Um, examples that I have, um, let's, let's bring back the same um, rule 30 video. Um, some functions like color negate were obvious, what should they do um, with a video that goes in? Frame by frame, negate, and that's it. Something like blend, you would wonder, do you want to blend pixels? Do you want to blend um, how many How many should we blend and, and things like that? Maybe we, we didn't get to it because we, we didn't have enough time or we couldn't decide exactly how to promote this function to work with videos. Um, different reasons. That's not, that's not supported yet immediately. But you know what you want to do with blend. You just want to take five frames at a time, blend them together and see what kind of um, blended frames come back from that. A function like video frame map can take any function. It could be even an image function that we don't have. You have the bubble. Um, and then video as a feed, you say how many frames at the time I want to pass to these functions. Video padding is going to pad at the end so that um, by default, I think we, we use black frames, but fixed is just going to keep the rest of the frame. So here to begin with, this is the blend of the first five frames. And as I go, oops, wanted to pause somewhere there. You see that fading in a sense is the blend of multiple videos. Um, and if I didn't have video padding fixed, we would have seen a little bit of a black at the end, but um, that, take, that padding takes care of that. Um, so, okay, let me quickly open this up um, again. Um, subtle difference with uh, video frame map, video, a couple of subtle differences between video frame map and video map. Video frame map assumes that the function is function of an image. So either takes one single image or a series of images in. So I didn't specify any arguments there, or if I wanted to specify any arguments, it would have been a simple slot. Um, and that's my function. Video map, on the other hand, uh, and okay, video frame map doesn't touch other, uh, um, other tracks of the video object. It's keeping any audio tracks that are in there and so forth. Video map on the other hand is trying to be a more generic, uh, bigger function. The argument to video map is an association with the image, with audio, with the time, time boundaries, if I have multiple uh, frames and so forth. Um, so the function that needs to get past there takes arguments such as that slot image, slot audio, slot time. Um, and then by default, this is not porting any of the audio tracks back. If you want to put them back, we'll have to use syntax like that, where the image track is becoming some conversion. And I can show what this one is doing. Um, and then the audio is identity so that I can take it back. What I've done here in video map is that I've converted to HSP, added max of audio. So I'm, I'm looking at the audio track at a time and then taking the max of that, adding to the hue channel of the image. So basically doing some kind of a hue shifting. I'll go slower. If I just let it play, it's gonna be too fast. But this is basically shifting the white to different hues as I proceed with that. But now if I play it, um, there is no audio because I, I basically just get a single track of video content with that function that I've specified. Um, now with this other syntax, I say I want the audio back. So same same video is supposed to have the audio. I don't know why that didn't sound like anything, but um, it did last night. So we'll... <laughs> 
Um, another one and, or another two that we have are more around not video in, video out, video in some computations out. Um, the first example I have is um, another fun one I came up with earlier this week. Um, very simple, same rule 30 video that we had. I, I negate the frames um, and maybe this one shows what exactly I've done. So let, let that run. Um, I negate the frames, I compute intent, which gives me white over black. And then I compute intensity centroid of every frame, which is the centroid of all the white pixels that we have in each frame. Um, and then that's the measurement that comes out from video map time series. Now, video map time series gives me a time series where I can uh, ask for, um, where I can sample it at any time, not only that at the times that I have um, something uh, computed for. And if you see that purple dot, that's basically showing the centroid of all the content that we have in there. Um, again, because the content was black, background was right, white, our image functions ex expect white to be the foreground. So intensity centroid is computed for white. I had to do the negation. But apart from that um, small note, um, as, uh, as I move forward, that highlight is showing the uh, computed in intensity centroid. Again, could be any function. This is the one that runs fast and gives you a sense about what can be done. Now, there are some other things um, that unfortunately today doesn't fit into time series. We are looking at time series and ways that we can potentially change and improve that. But if I do, like before I was doing intensity centroid for every frame, I got a list of two numbers back consistent, it works fine. If I do something like dominant colors on every frame, Unfortunately, what comes back is a list like that, where for one frame, I have one dominant color, for the other one, I have two, I have five, so that list is not consistent. So if I wrap that into time series, unfortunately, time series complaint. Again, something that we're looking into possibly improve. Um, in a sense, workaround for now, I, I don't see any other usefulness of video map list because we are losing track of the times. But the workaround for the time being is that instead of video map time series, we use video map list. And then what comes out is just a list where every element is uh, corresponding to one frame of the video at that time. Um, so this one. Um, prototype builds, nightly builds. Um, all right, that's it. So for every frame, I get a list of colors corresponding to dominant colors of that slot. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm almost, I'm over time, but I'm almost done as well. Um, a couple of cute examples um, just to show the extent of things that uh, you can think can be created. Um, we have had a trajectory of uh, different objects falling computed with Mathematica forever. Um, and then as a fun example here, we have uh, a video of, um, of the beach. And then we, we solve, um, we run ND solve to compute if, if a ball is falling, what's that trajectory? Let's um, plot that. And then we just use the okay i don't run it and that's a reminder that i shouldn't run it because it takes time um we're we're just putting that beach ball um on that trajectory over the video again just just an example to show um there are plenty of things that anyone can imagine can be now done with with these functions that we have um another example that we have um, shown for our object detection for a while um now, now getting easier again, I don't run this. I think all of these are pre-computed, um, but just for you to see the video itself, there are people walking and a dog catching up with them. Um, so positions of the dog is computed using image bounding boxes, time series come back, overlay with that time series. Um, and then with parametric plot, we basically just start showing the positions that the dog showed up or was identified. Um, over that video. Last one here. Um, this one, again, another older example where we had a car, had a mask for the car. Uh, we compute the contours um, around the car. And then um, it kind of creates the hand sketch drawing of, of that car uh, using Fourier descriptors. And then um, in this created generated video, we just um, 
overlay them on the car itself as if somebody has been drawing on that. Um, machine learning and neural networks. Um, we have a good number of uh, video networks in the neural net repository, more is coming. Um, a lot of these are documented with examples doing um, um, action recognition um, to denoising. Um, we have a bunch more image nets that could be applied to frames of a video object, one frame at a time. Um, here is an example that is showing YOLO X, which is a neural network added to our repository, neural network introduced in the um, literature. Um, all good stuff. I'm not going to go into details. A couple of good points. All of video is still staying as experimental as we are experimenting with our designs and whether our choices and designs are holding up. Um, that means expect surprises, bugs, and all of that. But do send us anything that doesn't feel right in video functionality and do send us feedback on whatever that is missing from our video functionality. Um, okay, now I'm really going over time, but one problem we had with video in the previous versions was that it was really hard to have a whole bunch of video objects in your notebook locally. And then as soon as you send the notebook to someone else, video lost, they have to recompute everything. There is this easy um, um, menu item in the video object that says store this object in the cloud publicly or privately for me. So that if you open your notebook anywhere else, it's there. If you store it publicly, anyone else would have access to that. So that's, I think, an easy user interface addition to our video object that um, allows us for easier video sharing. More improvements on that we know has to come and will come. Um, but that's the state of video today. Thank you very much for coming.